Welcome to Season 3, Episode 49 of the Outlap F1 Podcast. This is the Mexican Grand Prix Race Review. I am your host, James, along with my wonderful co-host, John, and making his return tonight, Andy, after his long, long, long vacation. Feels like <laughs> forever since he's been on an episode. Uh, of an hour of an hour and a half, and oh, by the way, I still did all the posts. So. Make sure you put that PTO time in, in Time Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you use Time Tracker too, John. I like that. All right, so we know of this. We, we use a, you know, we run a respectable shop around here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I must say, uh, today's race was more siesta than fiesta. Uh, oh, nice. hey, damn it. You, you got to warm me on these. The, the one these sound things. effect I don't have in this thing. I was mushy for the... Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. But, but, I, but, I, but, I think, but I think this is better. <laughs> I just thought of it a minute ago and cracked me up. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But you're not wrong. Yeah. But you're not wrong. Yeah, probably top three least... <laughs> Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Got to help you out least, there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Probably top three least favorite races of the year. Um, had some excitement for about 20 seconds. And then um, I literally took a, a bit of a siesta during the race. I was watching on delay. So I woke up and had to rewind it and didn't miss anything. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> how was your Sunday, Andy? Um, Other than me chasing away this Hitchcockian bird invasion that has invaded my deck, <laughs> which is a whole other story. What? Uh, from is there a picture for this? If anybody knows how to get, well, apparently they found me or something. I'm not exactly sure, but the, the pigeons are trying to invade my deck. But other than that, it was fine. John? Uh, it's been good. You know, the Bears haven't lost yet, so <laughs> the weekend's still looking good. And, uh, yeah. And I, did the Packers lose? I think the Packers yes, lost, they right? did. Yeah. All right. Yes, so it's. So half the weekend's still intact, so we're we're in good shape. Actually, I picked- but yeah, it sucks that there's a race. You know, the few races in the, the U.S. that are actually at a normal time, it sucked that this one was a bit of a snoozer. But I mean, hell of a good atmosphere at least. Yeah. So yeah, the end the end was was cool seeing all the scenes with the with Checo celebrating from the home crowd and all that. But um, from laps like two to to seventy one. Yeah, a couple of moments there. Not so much going on, which which we'll get into in just a minute. But first, I must remind Unless everybody. Let's about Yes, he had a he had an interesting. Yes, game. he did, and we have some <laughs> effects for that that are ready to go. Um, <laughs> but I need to remind everybody you can find us on so all the social media sites: Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, and YouTube at our handle at Outlap F One Podcast. Of course, you can check our link tree on our Twitter profile. Um, we can find all those links. You can email the show at chat now at outlapf1.com. You can check out our website at www.outlapf1.com, where you'll find all of our old episodes and all of our tweets, um, including our F1 for Beginners episode, which if you're a new fan um, and you've heard about how awesome this year has been, and then you watch today and you're like, wasn't that great? Well, don't worry. It'll get better. Uh, we do have a crazy finish coming, I'm sure. Uh, but if you want to learn more about the sport, go back and listen to that episode, season three, episode six. Um, you can also check out our motorsport survey episode to see how the future is being shaped with F1. Um, that was with you 2 and Deanna. That was season three, episode 47. So go check that out. And I uh, mentioned Deanna. You can also check out her uh, other project, her relapse with Deanna um, on YouTube. Make sure you check that out. Um, I'm sure she's got a Mexico Grand Prix um, race reaction video coming up shortly. Um, and we have to call out Outlap F1 Nation stepping up. Andy, tell me more about that. Well, if you'd like to join the Outlap F1 Nation, please do check out our link in our show notes. Um, it's always great when we have uh, people who step up and do that. And to date, we've had Matt Polanski, Kevin Kelly, Richard Cole, Tim Brown, Hillary LaRose, Travis Colby, and Mary Brown all join up. Uh, we've, you know, you, you hear the sound effects, you hear the other stuff that we do, uh, and that's why we're doing it, um, to try to make this show better, make it enhanced. Uh, versions of it. So uh, if you'd like to do so, we still want that sign in Zandvoort. We want Fernando Alonso rolling over your name. Thank you. Join the Outlap F1 Nation. Thank you, Andy. Join all the other uh, incredibly smart, gifted, and beautiful people that are in the Outlap F1 (laughs) Nation. So uh, we really, really do appreciate that. And all of it will go back into the show. Um, And you can also help us out by checking out our partner, Manscaped, um, on their website, manscaped.com, to get 20% off and free shipping all of your awesome manscaping needs by using code OUTLAP. That's O-U-T-L-A-P, all one word. All right, so we got all that out of the way. Um, so now we talk headline of the day. Um, Andy, why don't you go first? 
Oh, I haven't really had a good thought of one, but uh, if I'm shooting from the hip on this one, I'm just going to say um, Monaco style wings equal Monaco style race. Uh, really, really resembled more of a Monaco parade than an actual F1 race. And it kind of just sucks for the, the people in Mexico. I mean, I know they left all happy because Checo got the podium, but um, I thought they deserved a better show for that atmosphere to be as charged up as it was. It's so disappointing that this arrow just lets you down. It's been a couple of years. I forgot why I don't necessarily love this arrow at this track. And then I was reminded of that today. So, Yeah, a lot of fans there this weekend looked like uh, 370,000 plus. So big number um, coming into the gate uh, for this weekend. John, what do you got for your headline of the day? Um, you know, if you imagine that this, uh, this napkin here, and if I can get that on camera, is a flag. Uh, I think it's about time to start waving the white flag uh, for, if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan like myself. Because if it's uh, Brazil is anything like today, uh, I think we can kiss the championship goodbye because, um, yeah, the, the Red Bulls are just untouchable. Um, and, yeah, if it wasn't for nasty, dirty air, like you said, with, with Perez, I'm sure it would have been a one-two Um you know, for Red Bull, but uh, that, you know, he hit the the wall that was the dirty air and couldn't get past Hamilton. But on pace, uh, you know, after the first corner, he pretty much could sum this race up. So. <laughs> Do you have a- We're still fighting, but it's uh, the white flag is, is definitely, uh, we're, I'm starting to unfold it now. Do you have a second white so. flag, one for Lewis Hamilton and one for Sebastian Vettel? You can get them both, <laughs> both going. I think I waved that one at Cody. You just weren't there to see it. <laughs> Can't believe I missed it. Um, so my headline of the day. Much like Andy, Check the relap video. It's probably in there somewhere. <laughs> much like Andy, uh, I hadn't really thought of one either, and then I just realized uh, more siesta than fiesta would have been a great headline. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use that for my headline of the day. Um, all right, so let's move into the qualifying recap. Andy, break it down as you do. So uh, this is how everybody qualified. There were another plethora of uh, engine penalties and post-qualifying penalties, but this is how everybody actually set uh, lap times. So in P20... Uh, not setting a lap time because he crashed. Uh, that would be Lance Stroll. Uh, P19 was Nikita Mazepin. P18, Mick Schumacher. P17, Nicholas Latifi. And P16, Fernando Alonso. So a bit of a surprise there. Uh, going through to Q2, but going no farther in P15 was Esteban Ocon. He did end up starting from the back uh, with a power unit change. P14, Antonio Giovinazzi. P13, something we can talk about a little bit, George Russell. Uh, he was assessed a five-place grid penalty for a change of gearbox uh, because he used it on Friday, and it failed. So that didn't work. Uh, P12 was Kimi Raikkonen. P11, Sebastian Vettel. Uh, going through to Q3, the top 10 from 10 to 1. P10 was Lando Norris. However, he started from the back for a complete change of power unit. Uh, P9 was Yuki Tsunoda. He also started from the back with a change of power unit. Uh, P8 was Charles Leclerc. P7, Daniel Ricciardo. <coughs> P6, Carlos Sainz. P5, Pierre Gasly. P4, Sergio Perez. P3, Max Verstappen. P2, Lewis Hamilton. And with one haymaker of a qualifying lap uh, in P1 with a lap time of 115.875 was Valtteri Bottas. Very nice. Thank you, Andy. John, any thoughts from qualifying you want to get into? Uh, I mean, I guess we, we need to talk about the, the Yuki thing. Uh you know, real fast. But before we get to that, just a real quick thought. Someone posted this on Twitter. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. We've seen just a enormous plethora of engine and PU changes in the last handful of races. Um, and, you know, people are starting to say, you know, is it is it starting to take away from the show now? You know, are we getting to that point where, you know, three was a, was a great number when we had 18 races or so. Now that we've got 23, talked about 25 in a couple of years. Uh, is it time to maybe look into expanding that if, if pretty much every single team is taking engine penalties at least one, sometimes more than once. And it's not for a developmental thing. I'm like, you know, with the exception of Ferrari, is it, is that a sign that perhaps we're, we're stretching things a little thin here? I think you have the perfect sign that that is exactly <laughs> what they're doing. There was no way that three engines were going to last um, across 23 races or, or 22 races. However much we ended up getting, it was never going to happen. We knew this was going to happen. Um, we're a victim of our own creation in this case because they set the rules. They wanted three to, to cut costs or something, and now they're they're still spending the same money on the extra power unit. It should be at least four, if not even five. Um, that rule would at least make some sense. Uh, yeah, so I c- completely agree. It is affecting the show. It's it's a dumb rule. I wish it would change. 
I'm with Andy. They should uh they should definitely allow more, at least one more, if not two, um, for pretty much all the components that they have those restrictions on. I think they, I mean, it has to grow along with the calendar, and the calendar doesn't seem to be slowing down. <laughs> so yeah, they need they need right. to get some more parts. It, in. And it's yeah, and it's weird too because the cost cap is continuing to shrink, but the calendar looks like it's going to continue to grow. So not really sure how that's all going to play out, but yeah, um, I agree with you guys. I think it is starting to be a distraction and um, you know, it kind of reminds me of like a, a formula E style where you get a penalty in a prior race and all oh, you're starting, you know, or you have a power unit. You can't, you know, you can't take enough, you know, uh, of a, an impact on that race. So you start from the back of the next race, you know, stupid stuff like that. It's just starting to be a distraction, I think. So, um, but Andy, what was your thoughts on the Yuki situation? So, all right, so just to set the scene, um, this is the final laps of the end of Q3. Um, obviously, with L- both Norris and Sonoda having, knowing that they were starting from the back, they got into Q3 for basically one purpose, and that was to give a tow to their respective teammates. Norris giving a tow to Ricardo down the straight, and Sonoda doing the same thing for Pierre Gasly, both of which worked out fairly well. Ricardo qualifying P7, Gasly qualifying P5. So they both that part of it both worked. Now, what ended up happening was, what does Yuki do once his toe is done? Um, he elected to basically, about halfway through the lap, when they get into one of the twisty bits, pull off to the side. Um, and because this track is not used a lot, it kicks up a cloud of dust when he did that. And it just so happened that here happens to come uh, one Sergio Perez, who saw the cloud of dust and jinked and screwed him up and takes him off. And then following uh, Sergio Perez is Max Verstappen, who was on his, you know, final flying hot lap. So it obviously looked like it affected him. That's what it, that's what they both said after the the qualifying session. So what do you do in the case of Yuki Tsunoda? Obviously we, we heard from Christian Horner afterwards. He was not happy. Um, Apparently he went on uh, Sky Sports and called it uh, that Max got tsunoda so that's not good. Um, and then uh, I guess one helmet Marco decided to mosey on down to uh, Alphatari and and give Yuki a, a piece of his mind. And if you know anything about helmet Marco, you know what a colorful and fun and supportive person he is. Um, so I can't imagine Yuki felt all that great. And I don't think he did anything wrong uh, in this. So if you're going to have that tactic and everybody knows it, He either needed to, one, continue on at speed and stay out of the way. That's fair. You could ask him to do that. But he was peeling off. He was trying to give everybody space. That's what he was trying to do. Yeah, it's like a guy A guy does exactly what you want him to do and and gets out of the way. And I don't know. It just (laughs) – I've said it before, but I think Helmut Marko is – I think it's time to retire, bud. (laughs) Um, You know, if the COVID camp wasn't enough, I I think we would just continue to have – more and more and more examples that, um, you know, perhaps your your time. Is, well, it's very much to, old man yells at cloud. Yeah, and you, a and, lot you and Bernie but, Ecclestone can go and uh, right. And, I mean, it wasn't know, it wasn't so much what what Helmet said, but what Christian Horner says that that's a dude who's in control of Yuki's next step of his career, and Damn. whether it's right or it's wrong or it's in the heat of the moment, or maybe he did, you know Christian didn't see the tape. When that becomes the narrative. Christian Horner is good at setting narratives, if nothing else. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, that was unfair to Yuki in this case. Very unfair. Yeah, it was a shame to see Twitter blowing up about Yuki. And, I mean, the, the kid had nothing to do with, with any of this really going on. Um, you know, Perez made a mistake. And I know it was dusty as hell, but it made a mistake. It cost Max. It just chalk it up to one of those things that happened. Um, to call him out like that it just seems a little absurd to me. But. Anywho, yeah, it's, it's the joys of being with Red Bull Racing. Yeah, I mean, at the at the end of the day, it kind of helped them out anyway because being on the second row, I think, is is where right. you want to be there. So, um, yeah, I, I told you guys before the race, I, I wished uh, Lewis would have qualified third instead of second because I think that would have been the sweet spot to be. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I do think that it, it it definitely helped them. But considering we're talking about you know a team that you know gave Checo Perez a broken wing <laughs> for qualifying. Uh, because they wanted Max to have, Max broke his wing, gave it to Checo. Uh, you know, I shouldn't be surprised. So, anyways, but moving Checo on. Checo broke a wing too. Yeah, no, but they, they put that did. on Max's car. Yeah, <laughs> but Checo's was actually breaking the ring. Max's sounds like it was <laughs> more of a design flaw. Just saying. But anyways, I mean, 
you probably would have done the same thing right. if you were in charge of that wing, though, no? No, nah, I would have been not been a cheap ass and would have brought another wing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we find out. Uh, I hope we find out the truth preparation. behind that. If it's a cost cap thing or what, because uh, that's the only way I can explain that. Just looking at it. From yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same thing with Russell in the gearbox. You know, like they they it wasn't that they didn't have a Friday gearbox; they had one. It failed. And then they just went ahead and put in the race gear box thinking, oh, okay, all we have to do is get through a 60 minute FP2 session. And then it fails there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a lack of spares, whether that's cost cap or whether it's the fact that these are the first flyaways and people and teams just aren't bringing adequate spares. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what the cause of this is. It's, it's just, it's weird. Yeah. It's strange. It's not something we're used to seeing. Yeah, I definitely want to find out more about that though, because there's still two more ones uh, to go far away from home. So uh, hopefully they get that figured out because I'd hate for uh, for anything to be decided on something like that. Well, the, the ones in the Middle East is easier to get replacement parts than it is, you know, Brazil will be the last really true yeah. true flyaway. The other ones, they'll have a little bit easier way of, of getting, you know, back to home base and, and getting things shipped if they need it. True, true. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into the race here. Um, probably fly through these back markers, but... We got uh, Yuki Tsunoda in P20, Mick Schumacher in 19th, Nick Nikita Mazepin in 18th, uh, Latifi in 17th, Russell in 16th, Batas all the way down in 15th. So we'll touch on him. Lance Stroll in 14th, and Esteban Ocon in 13th. Um, so, John, where do you want to start? You want to dive right in on Batas here? Because I don't – anybody behind him, I don't really have anything to, to say on. <laughs> yeah, I've got two theories here. Uh, here's the first one. <laughs> I'll keep that under 10 seconds. I don't want to get sued. But, um, <laughs> so the, the first one is either it's a clown show or the second one is this with being it's a double agent. <laughs> because something's just not right here. I mean, you, you, you talk about the, the lap one, turn one, where everything happened. The entire race was, was won and lost in, in that one corner. It's a shame that we had a GP like that. But um, Valtteri had a, had, had a good start. Hamilton had a good start. Max had a good start. At one point, you know, Max and Lewis are running, or excuse me, Max or Lewis and, and Voucher are running almost neck and neck. Um, you could tell, you know, Lewis is trying to like push them towards the left. They're trying to close off and get further towards the racing line because obviously the right side of the track is insanely dusty. Um, and, and Valtteri decides to just continue to drift closer to the center lane and leaves literally more than a car's length. Um, on the racing line of all places for Max Verstappen to go, uh, and then decides to break early. So he, he makes his teammate who he's helping, quote unquote. Uh, he pushes him to uh, stay on a, a crappy part of the track, and he gives the absolute prime real estate, prime rubber section of the track to the rival Max Verstappen. So I'm thinking either this is a clown show. Uh, because of everything that happened after that, or the kid's just a double agent at this point. I, I can't tell what's happening here. Uh, I, I don't know if you can intentionally, if you're that bad, can you do it on purpose? I know there's a lot of people that are talking about Valtteri having bad luck, and I know he got clipped there shortly thereafter. But, I mean, always, if he just holds his line, then worst-case scenario, Max is forced to take the inside, um, probably doesn't make the corner, probably slides through, um, and then who knows what after that, after that because they said they weren't going to really penalize lap one and turn one issues. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the lap one situation was a, was a clown show, in, in my opinion. Uh, it just, how do you leave any, even if it, you're fighting Lewis, how do you leave, how do you let anyone have that much of a, of a car's width to there? And it's the racing line. Like, of all places, put yourself on the racing line. So, anyways, that was that was lap one for, for Valtteri. Uh, I don't know, we get your thoughts on that. <laughs> we can get on to the rest of the race for him. But any thoughts for you guys? Ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah, not, well, not good, obviously. Um, yeah, it was a strange line coming off the line. The second phase of the start is kind of where, like, you had a really good first phase of the start, and I, I didn't have a problem with it. The second phase where everybody started to fan out, the line he chose was not ideal. Like, it was not, he, he obviously didn't think he was going to be leading going into that first corner to try to even get inside his head to try to figure out what he's thinking is something I'm not qualified to do. Um, it just, he ended up in probably, he took the best starting position and turned it into the worst position by that corner. 
Um, and it just, it, it, it did exactly, it, it, I don't think he was doing it intentionally, but I also don't think he's apt to try to play huge team games because this is a team that's let him go and he's driving for himself. Um, going out and setting the pole is him driving for himself. I mean, they've saddled him with how many power unit penalties over the course of the last two, three races. I don't think he's playing a team game. I think he was out for himself. I think he screwed up. Um, I think if you, you know, if you actually got him to tell the truth, I think he would just admit, Hey, I screwed it up, but I, I don't think he was trying to play anybody's team game there. Yeah. And, and obviously I'm joking about the double agent part, but it just like, even if you're going for yourself, which I know that's what he's doing, put yourself in the prime line, dude. Like, hello. <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying he screwed that up. I mean, it shouldn't be a shock to any of us that he's not that great at wheel to wheel racing. I mean, that's right. That's, that's just Bates. I mean, yeah. You know, and, and, and then he was 70 stuck, laps after this. To and then he was stuck that. behind Ricardo with double DRS. That straight is a double DRS zone. And he could not get past um, Ricardo in the McLaren for basically the entire race. Bates going to Bates. And he's got like, you know, yep. brand new power unit everything's because we just continue to replace them on this car. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Mercedes should have done another calculated uh, move and, and took another PU <laughs> situation and bumped them back a few places just to give Hamilton uh, the spot up there. But I, well, I, well I mean, he did yeah, get the point just, for the fastest lap. That was about the yeah, only that's thing true. He contributed. Well, to he's, 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 he's stole time. the point. He didn't get the point. Well, yeah. <laughs> Which ended up being <laughs> after after two attempts. <laughs> Let's not forget it. it. Took two attempts. He just well, if he screwed it up the first time, you know, he just he he knows that the pit crew needs a, as much practice as they can get, so he's trying to help them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, uh, it just, it, it blows my mind. And yeah, to be stuck behind, I mean, Ricardo didn't look great either. It, it makes me wonder, like, could those guys, you know, Andy and I talked about, it, could those guys have semi quote unquote unofficially worked together and try to like work their way back up the field? But they spent so much time just you know, battling each other that they were just miles behind at some point. So it, it just, it was, it was ridiculous. And the fact that I know Ricardo is, it's a good defender and all, but come on, man, a double DRS in equal power, make Should've it bad, Bob, do something, <laughs> you know, make, but, I, but, I, but I think, but I think <laughs> with the shortness of the track, and I think that particular instance, both Botas and Ricardo kind of, you know, it, 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 it displays the issue overall with the track. The track is not long enough. There's no real, other than turn one, there's no obvious overtaking place. So if you can't get it done there, even though there's two other DRS zones, those DRS zones are basically null and void. Nobody was making any moves around those other places. And the parts where it gets twisty are too twisty for more than one car to fit through. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're screwed no matter what you did. The second... The second they collided, the second Ricardo collided with Botas, the second Botas spun, that was the end of their race. It didn't matter. You, know, you might as well just have retired both cars, honestly. Yeah. Well, at least they got that, that one point. But, yeah, I mean, it was funny that all the overtakes we saw in turn one, they were all pretty much, what, on the outside, right, I believe? Yep. <laughs> so the, the one place that Valtteri didn't uh, put his car. Um, but, yeah, I, that's just it, just more frustrations for me on, on Valtteri. I know he gets bad luck, and it's not his fault he got punted, but – I mean, let's be honest. Even if he doesn't get punted, you know, he's probably cruising but, around. But if in he's P5, in that fight, it, even if he's P5 or even if he's P4, you know, at least then it's part of he's part of the equation. Um, once he's gone out of there, it made the Red Bull strategy. I mean, I think back to our predictions episode, John, this is exactly what you were afraid of was two Red Bulls against basically one Mercedes. And that's what happened. Yep. Two in the chamber is better than one. So. Yep. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, um, a fifth place finisher, fourth anything would have given them some points, and then they'd be up more than a, a point in the constructor. I was going to say, and now it's it, the construct the constructors is as open as is even more open than the drivers at this. Point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we wouldn't said that even two races ago. Yeah, yeah, it looked like it was it was done and gone, and I thought my prediction of Red Bull winning the constructors was out the window, but no, sure enough, and going into another track that they're going to be favored at. Uh, they they very likely will be leading coming out of Brazil. 
Yeah, they need so. to stack some points before the last two. I, but hey, I appreciate that. Trey, that one point is the is the difference <laughs> right now. That fastest lap is the difference right now in the constructor standing. So he did he did one thing right, I guess today. And he did obliterate <laughs> the lap record. The the lap yeah. he did set was actually pretty good, one seventeen something. But, uh, you, you put the guy in clean air, and he's a hell of a good racer. I've always said that, but he just he, in, in elbows to elbows, it's just, forget it. So, some <laughs> he's just gonna roll over somewhere <laughs> in the future in the opposite hemisphere that we're in right now. Dino is slowly fist pumping right now. Bates, <laughs> the reason Mercedes is ahead in the constructor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. He's, well, that's after he's got the voodoo doll on me <laughs> for everything I said for the last five minutes. <laughs> oh, love you, Dino. Oh, sorry, Dino. <laughs> All right, let's move into the uh, midfield. Uh, we had a little bit of action here. Uh, Danny Ricardo finishing in 12th uh, for no points. Antonio Giovinazzi finishing in 11th where, where he started, so I guess decent day for him where his year has been going. Uh, Lando Norris uh, does steal a point there in P10. Fernando Alonso in 9th. Kimi Raikkonen in P8. I think that's got to be his... Best finish of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sebastian Vettel in P7, which is pretty good for him. Uh, P6, Carlos Sainz. P5, Charles Leclerc. And P4, Pierre Gasly. What a day uh, for Pierre. So let's start with Sebastian Vettel, who is now almost a full 100 points behind Leclerc. And then, John, I just wanted to remind you that there's only four races left, which means there's a total of 104 points max <laughs> that Sebastian Vettel can get. So, maybe so you're telling me there's still yeah. a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wins all four races and the fastest lap, and Charles Leclerc doesn't get any points. Otherwise, mm, almost time to pay up, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we're going to be sponsored by uh, Benny's Beverage Studio <laughs> any, any day now. So <laughs> they're going to help out with my my debts. Mm. Um, yeah, in all seriousness, though, he did he did actually have a, a pretty good day. One of the few that that made a couple of moves there, and. Um, yeah, six points is, is probably actually a lot better than I thought. You know, any of the mm -hmm. the Astons were going to come out of this track. That, that's uh, his given their highest, overall pace. I think this is his highest finish. What, did, what was the stat I saw? I think since Monaco, because um, the P two in Hungary got thrown out, so he has not been in the points. He's not been in this high in the points in a long time. So uh, this turned out to be a very good day, all things relatively considered, for one Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, he did a pretty good pace there in his second stint um, towards the end. So. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it was a pretty good day for him, but uh, he's got quite quite a quite a bit of work to do. All the be relevant. All the old guys doing well today. Yeah, yeah, great day by uh, Kimi Raikkonen. Um, probably that might be his last points finish ever in F one. So that's kind of a strange thing to to say and to think about. <clears throat> um, but Andy, let's get into McLaren a little bit before I talk about Ferrari. Um, not a good day. Well, and, and it all stemmed on, on lap one. And if anything, I would say Daniel is a victim of his own awesome start um, <laughs> because he got off the line. He got he got past both Ferraris. And then all of a sudden he finds himself because the other four had had kind of the same neutral start um, and were neutralizing each other. He ends up kind of on the back of that battle. And he really ended up in Nowheresville as, as a result of it. He was way, way over to the right. He ended up in some really, really dirty part of the track. Uh, he locks up twice trying to, to make that first corner. And, you know, it's one of those, if he doesn't stick his nose in there, he probably gets swallowed up. And then if he does stick his nose in there, we obviously saw what happened. He pips Valtteri Bottas in the back. Uh, it did do a significant amount of damage to the front wing, destroyed his front wing. Uh, he then runs over his front wing, and that was pretty much uh, end of the day for, for Daniel. So a victim of, I would say, is too good of a start. Um, probably, if you wanted to yell at him, you could say, you know, hey, back off, know where you are kind of situationally. That's fair. And and he even said in the post-race uh, that, that the collision was his fault. Uh, in terms of Lando, uh, starting from the back, uh, any sort of points are gravy in that situation. So um, I, I guess I'm happy with 10th. I wish he could have closed up a little bit more on Alonzo late. Um, but as was again on display with a lot of people. Um, even though you had a tire advantage, it wasn't necessarily enough to overcome the dirty air or overcome the aero disadvantage uh, unless you were over a second clear and he wasn't. So yeah. that's where he ended up. Yeah, I think all in all, a, a good day for, for Norris, one of the few that actually made some moves. But yeah, unfortunately, now there's 13 and a half points between Ferrari and McLaren, with McLaren being on the, the wrong side of that deal. So 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. See, um, going back to Ricardo, what do you guys think? There's a lot of people on Twitter saying, where's the penalty? Where's the penalty? Where's the penalty? Um, without being a complete homer, Andy, what did you think about the situation as far as penalties and what we've seen as of late? For, as, if you, if you wanted to that? give him one, you could. It, you know, it, It's probably worthy of a five-second, but it is a first lap incident. So um, I thought it was self-penalized, if anything else, because of where he ended up. Um you know, he, he destroys his wing and all of that. Like I said, I thought he was a victim. If he doesn't get the great start and he ends up slotting where I thought he should have been, uh, which is behind that that front four, and I thought he got wide-eyed and he went, ooh, let's see what I can do. Because I even said that. I went, oh, come on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally my reaction. Um, and that was, yeah, so that's what happened. Jay, but, yeah, what do you think I think it could have been appropriate. You can make an argument for that. Yeah, I guess – you could make an argument for it. I just thought it was funny that he takes Bates out and then keeps Bates stuck behind him for <laughs> like the whole race. So <laughs> if, I, if I was a Bates fan, I'd be really mad about it. But, I mean, he didn't come back and score any points, so I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to, to think anymore because we've seen – we saw a slew of, of – first lap incidents that weren't penalized. And then we saw a few, a couple that were, that seemed actually is, like less is, than the ones that were penalized. It's so, what happens when you have different stewards making these calls. Yeah. That's exactly. So, I mean, I, I would chalk it up to a, a lap one incident, lap one turn one incident is kind of bound to happen with that dirty of a track. Somebody was going to run into somebody there. And yeah. You knew something was going to happen there. We, we saw others get collected as well in the, in the mayhem. So, um, even if it was perfect conditions, I think, you know, it's just bound to happen with that long of a, of a drag down to turn one, that much fanning out that much, you know, um, you know, drafting, um, then you knew it was going to happen. So it's just too many cars in, in, uh, moving together at that point. So, but anyways, yeah, I, I could see it either way. I'm a little surprised that they didn't just give in the last two, but then again, like you said, we never really know what's going to happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so at the end of the day though, McLaren got one point today, Andy. Um, Ferrari, on the other hand, got 18 points. Um, so really good day, I thought, by Ferrari. Um, coming into it, they were worried about Pierre Gasly and that Alpha Tauri, which they were they were dead on with that because um, there were I, there was just no chance either one of them were going to get them. I know they tried towards the end, but Carlos Sainz starting at six, finishing at sixth. Uh, Leclerc had a nice start, um, started in eighth, and then finished in fifth. Pretty much made up all those places um, right at the beginning of the race and never looked back, um, except briefly with some team orders where they had Sainz and Leclerc swap. Um, kind of saw it coming. Sainz pitted, I think, like 13 laps after um, after Leclerc did, which, you know, coming into the race, you hear a lot about um, the undercut is huge in Mexico City. Like, the undercut's going to be big, but it almost seemed like the overcut worked out better in a couple different instances. Yeah. So uh, with Sainz and then with Checo, I'd say, even as well. Um, track position was much more valuable yeah. than tires. Yeah, that's it. That's a good uh, good point there. Um, so so they swapped. Um, I know there was a radio message about Science saying I think Leclerc is making these mistakes to to keep me behind him, which uh, I don't think that's true because I'm sure from the beginning it was like, hey, swap. If he can't chase him down, we'll swap back. And I don't think there's any chance he was going to chase Gasly down. He would have needed a lot more laps and probably another set of tires. But um, so kind of saw that come in. Um, he was he was cut into his lead really quickly. Um, so they did swap finally. He he gained a little bit on Gasly, but that was never going to happen. Um, they did swap back again at the end, um, which I was really expecting and really thankful for because I'm looking at uh, Lando Norris's P5 in the, in the Drivers' Championship. That's where I set my goal for Leclerc with only four races to go. So he is 12 points back of Lando still. Um, so that is definitely possible. Um, could probably need some luck on Ferrari's side to make that happen. But uh uh, Charles is seven and a half clear of signs now, so I do expect him to be his teammate. Although well, I won't be totally heartbroken if he isn't, because I do like signs too. But um, Ferrari couldn't have asked for too much better of a weekend, I don't think. Obviously, a P4 and P5 would have been a little bit better, but um, they put themselves in really strong position to, to finish off in third in the constructors. So, um, I mean, you got any faith in your boys finishing off here in the last four races, or you think uh, Ferrari's got it in hand now, Andy? I would say it's advantage Ferrari at this point. Um, I think you just have to look at the results and, and say that. Um, we're going to tracks that we don't know who's going to be better 
in Qatar. We don't know who's going to be better in Saudi Arabia. So does it, that's a big question mark. Andy, does it, what's the weather like in Qatar? Is it normally cold or hot? or? Well, it's going to be at night, so it gets cool Damn. quickly. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a hot, dry desert that when the sun goes <laughs> down, it gets it tumbles. So, that's, yeah, I mean, they he's good in the beginning of the race. They might not be so good at the end of the race. Yeah, so and not to mention, there's yeah, not to mention Ferrari's been good at, at you know low speed stop you know, and accelerate out to type corners. And Qatar is going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be long, sl- you know, flowing, swooping corners. Motor, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think like. I, if I were to bet on it, I would say McLaren would have the advantage, just given the characteristics and what we've seen this year. But I mean, yeah, the the horsepower advantage might be pretty similar. Um, you know, there is that insanely long straight at Qatar, so that's certainly going to help them out. But overall, I would I would tend to think with the weather, the temperatures that we'll see at night, and the type of uh, corners, I would think you know, uh, pro McLaren on that. But yeah, and going back to Ferrari, I think if, if Sainz had any chance of, of catching Gasly in front, they need to make the swap immediately. I feel like they were, and I don't know if he would have or not, but I there was way it, too but, much back yeah. and forth conversation between the two. Um, so, you know, it's just, I, I think maybe, and maybe they told him, maybe they don't, but I, I think if they would have made it clear, hey, if he doesn't catch you, we'll swap back. You know, if they would have said that early, early in, um, and not have, you know, Leclerc was basically like, oh, well, if he gets to me, I'll, I'll let him go kind yeah, of but, thing. And there was, there's so much dirty air. It's like you saw with Perez. So you get to that section and you're done. Yeah, that's fair, though. So, there's a lot of lap traffic that they're going through. Um, there's not a lot of good places to let somebody overtake you in Mexico City. And with Vettel being on the pace he was, why take a chance of, of letting Leclerc fall off? Because he was complaining about his tires, too, that he was starting to lose them. So I, I would have been pretty upset if they switched him right away in a bad spot and then Vettel's on Leclerc's ass, and then it, I think that would have been a bad call because at the end of the day, they had to know there was very little chance of catching Gasly. I mean, and he honestly probably wasn't even pushing. As soon as Sainz, if he would have gotten within like 10 seconds of him, I'm sure they would have been like, hey, Gasly, step it up here for a few laps, and then he would have just gone away again. So um, it would have been a terrible, terrible decision for Ferrari to do that sooner. I think it was kind of pointless when they did it. Um, fine with them trying it, I guess, but there, there was no chance that that was going to change anything. Yeah, I mean, I think I think coming down the stretch to to further the point, it, it a lot of this I think is going to get decided on Saturday. I think where we're going, you're going to have tracks where it's track position being a lot more important uh, than even relative race pace because you look at the entire field. The relative race pace I think is fairly even throughout, other than Red Bull, other than Mercedes, um, and other but, yeah, than yeah, if, if you don't have track direction. position, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm with you on that. All right. So uh, anybody else from the top ten we want to touch on at all? Um, we already said the old guys had a pretty good showing. The on nice. Just want to just want to just want to call out Pierre Gasly. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is like the quietest P four ever. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what a heck of a drive! What a heck of a weekend! Um, to be right on Red Bull's rear end. Um, now, granted, he was forty some seconds off, but he was the best of the rest. Clearly. Um, AlphaTauri, if, if Sonoda doesn't take the engine penalty, what could they have done with this weekend? Uh, but Pierre Gasly, hell of a drive. Shout out for me. Yeah, it was an awesome drive um, and very, very lonely, it seemed, except for maybe some lap traffic here and there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's take our uh, sponsor break here, here from one of our favorite sponsors, and we'll be right back to talk about the podium. Welcome back to Season 3, Episode 49 of the All FF1 Podcast. This is the Mexican Grand Prix Race Review, you've got James, Andy, and John. Quick reminder, make sure you go to manscaped.com and use code OUTLAP. That's O-U-T-L-A-P to get 20% off and free shipping on all your manscaping needs. All of their products are awesome. We've tried them all. I love them all. I know John and Andy love them all, too. I know you will, too. So go check them out. Help support the show. Believe it or Um, not, the holidays are coming. And that's kind of a scary thought. But, yes, go do that. Yeah. I, I had that realization a couple days ago where I was like, dang, it's, it's November. <laughs> <laughs> Next month is December. And then, of course, the Chicago weather that we have today, it's like 65 degrees, bright and sunny. It's like, it's not November yet. This is awesome. Um, so hopefully everybody in the Chicago land area enjoyed probably our last yeah, enjoy nice last day. <laughs> um, at least last nice weekend day because it's going to get cold. Uh, As but... they've said in other, in other uh, shows, winter is coming, and it is coming fast. <laughs> hey. Yeah. 
And it'll suck just as bad as the last season of yep. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so it's that's a different podcast. I'll watch it. <laughs> Uh, just I can't even tell people to watch it anymore because the ending is just so disappointing. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the podium from today, where we had the first Mexican driver to finish on the podium in their home Grand Prix, that being Sergio Checo Perez, finish on the third step of the podium, just behind Lewis Hamilton, and well, quite a ways behind Max Verstappen in first place. Uh, John, your boy sandwiched in between the Red Bulls, so I guess you could be happy about being in front of one of them? Yeah, I think that, like, you know, they, they said about our mention on the broadcast, too. I think if he told Lewis that he'd come out of here with a P2, he'd probably be happy with it. I mean, it, it's – obviously, he would prefer that the other Red Bull be in front and Max be behind him, just from a point standpoint. But, yeah, it's just – it's it's it is what it is. I mean, it's another weekend where I think from a Hamilton standpoint, I don't – you know, last – in Coda a week ago – um or two weeks ago. I don't know. The, the days all run together at this point. But um, I, I don't think he, he had a lap wrong, and I think he got bit by poor strategy uh, on, on that one that we talked about. And then this one, I mean, again, I don't think he had a, a lap wrong. Uh, well, I did tell you that. He did, I think, have one little off-track uh, moment, I believe, at some point. I didn't see the replay, but they mentioned it on the broadcast. Um, so I don't know how egregious it was. But, I mean, honestly, it, it, he ran a, he ran a, a, a damn good race, um, but the, the pace is just – it's unbelievable, just the difference. I mean, um, you know, if it wasn't for a, a botched uh, qualifying, I'm sure Red Bull would have started 1-2. Um, and, yeah, I, I just don't think there was any there was any competition there. So, uh, I guess happy to, to be in P2 uh, overall. Um, but, yeah, just it's just one of those weekends, unfortunately, and it's a lot of those this year. So, uh, Mercedes have to be perfect at the tracks that they should win. They've got to be perfect from a strategy standpoint because they've gotten bit a few times. And then there's going to be a few tracks like this and like Brazil where it's probably going to be, um, you know, game on Red Bull. And like I said last week, you know, if you're a Lewis fan, you just got to hope that you're still in the fight by the time we get to Qatar. Um, so you just, you just hope that, you know, you got, you still have a, a chance and still have a battle there. So, but for, for Brez, I mean, hell of a good race. Cool as hell to see the the fans there, and the, you know, lap thirty five becomes the first Mexican driver to ever lead a race at their home Grand Prix. Obviously, the first Mexican driver to stay on the podium at their home Grand Prix. So, while it's not a win, it really I'm sure it felt like a win for him. It was cool as hell to see his dad run around. Uh, I think he was more excited <laughs> than Checo was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I want to. I want to enjoy my third place on something as much as Checo's dad yeah. enjoyed the third place today. Yeah. So I mean, just uh, uh, a really phenomenal day for for Perez uh, all around. Um, again, I think he got bit by the dirty air. I think from a pace standpoint, he certainly had more pace than Hamilton. But you saw how fast he closed that gap. They were talking about last lap, and then next thing we you know, six laps later, he's already on Hamilton's ass. Um, you know, Hamilton had to deal with some Norris issues. I don't know if that was helping him or hurting him. He, maybe a little bit of both, maybe a little bit of a drag on the straights, but then, you know, obviously having dirty air through sectors two and three uh, that would hurt him. But obviously, Checo was equally hurt by that as well. But you could just see the pace difference, and all of a sudden you just hit that dirty wall or dirty or air wall. Uh, it was kind of game over for that. So that's sort of the, the tail of the entire race, unfortunately. And for Max, I mean, a boring After race for him. One, I'm sure. What else did he do wrong? Really, <laughs> yeah, nothing. He uh, he made the move. He uh, he put his car in the logical place on turn one, unlike Valtteri Bottas, and um, the rest was history. I mean, he had a hell of a good safety car restart. Uh, I think he went at an appropriate time there. Um, and yeah, he, again, I not didn't turn a lap wrong all day. So. And also, guess what? Red Bull have learned how to do good pit stops again because I thought I saw 2.2 and yep. 2.4 for both of them, yeah. respectively. So yeah, uh, that Perez rule was... can go bite it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, lap 33, Sabin had a 2.2, and lap 41 when Perez came in, they had 2.3. So, okay. Yeah, um, I, I, think, I don't know if we'll ever say a sub-2 again, but it seems like 2.2 now is like the mark, which I forgot to mention it earlier, but Ferrari really impressed me yeah, with their no. pit stops today. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever seen Ferrari with two good pit stops like that in a row. Yeah, ever. I didn't have the, the Leclerc run written down, but I know it was fast. But Science was a 2.3 as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, damn, damn good. Teams have figured that out, and that only lasted a couple of weeks. So, yeah, again, it's like, that it rule was, can go by way of the Make, make a rule that, that had virtually no impact to anything. So, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull's still the best. Go figure. Andy, any other thoughts on uh, Red Bull's dominance today? 
Well, you know, here's the thing, and I, and I understand, I get the John's waving the white flag and, and wants to, you know, kind of call this thing, and there is an argument for not that. Yet, but, not yet, but it's, it's good. But I'm unfolding it. I, I, <laughs> I will, iron I will out, give some, some positivity here. <laughs> Mercedes are finally through Mexico. I mean, how many engine changes did it take to finally get two cars through Mexico? Lewis's engine didn't blow up. You know, we didn't end up in a box of neutrals or any of that. He didn't lose a gearbox, didn't lose any of that stuff. Now they go to tracks where, I mean, other than Brazil, which will be at some altitude, it's not nearly as bad as this. Um, and I think then the championship shifts back a bit more after Brazil, at least to tracks that may, again, we, we have big question marks. We don't know who's really going to, Qatar is going to favor. We think it might favor Mercedes a little bit. We don't know. Um, so we'll see. And, and the other thing is, is Count Lewis Hamilton out at your peril. Um, this guy, he, ha I haven't seen him find that other, other gear yet, but I, I know it's there. And if he can tap into that. Dude's still got the goods, when, you know, when it's pressure time. Uh, but it's it's it got harder today, uh, absolutely. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I think the problem for Lewis is, I mean, he may very well go on and win the last three races, but if Valtteri doesn't do his part and Verstappen finishes P2 in all three of those races, you know, mathematically, it's probably still not going to make a difference. So he needs, he needs Valtteri to, to I mean – I know Valtteri's on his way out and doesn't care about the team, but, I mean, Lewis, at least on, in public, has done literally everything to praise Valtteri for years and years and years and years and, and um, you know, step up, buddy, <laughs> and, and help your boy out one last time because uh, now's the time that, you know, normally they're fighting together, I get it, but, you know, now's the time that, that he needs you. He needs, you know, Mercedes need a one-two, really, of those last three races to have any real shot at this. Um, you know, if if – and we're talking – Lewis may still need a, a power change at some point, potentially. There's talks about it being at Brazil, since they know they may struggle at that. Um, I don't know if the weather and stuff like that may dictate that, depending on if they think they can get some overtaking. But, yeah, no, I never count Lewis Hamilton out. That You'd be crazy to do that. If there's a mathematical chance, he's going to be fighting hell. But, I mean, you could see, you could hear in his voice just throughout the weekend. Just uh, At one point, I think in... I don't remember if it was free practice or Paul probably, two, but probably said, the free practice. Yeah, they were like he's the, uh, the six tenths thing. Yeah, yeah, six tenths up, and he's <laughs> yeah, he's like awesome. what <laughs> six tenths? He's like I just ran the fastest lap of my life, and they're six tenths faster than me. So, uh, yeah, I mean the the Red Bull machine with the the, the high rake is just unbelievable uh, at these type tracks. So, yeah, I I, I think that it's it's certainly all to play for. Um, anything could happen, a puncture, anything crazy, you know, anything could happen here, and we're we're definitely well within one single uh, race of four worth of points. So if, if there's any kind of DNF, any kind of mechanical issue from Max's side, it's all to play for. But like I said, valtteri has got to help his boy out here if there's any shot, I think, for Lewis, because you know that most likely, worst case scenario, if something doesn't crazy happen, Max is probably still going to finish P2 uh, at a lot of these, you know, P2 are better mm -hmm. at a lot of these tracks coming up. So, Yeah, I, I pretty much got what I wanted out of this race. Um, Ferrari, took the lead over McLaren, and then Max Verstappen padded his lead without being out of reach, and uh, Red Bull really is on Mercedes' ass in the Constructors' Championship. So those are the things I wanted coming out of the race. So I did get everything I wanted out of the race, except for, like, the exciting racing part. <laughs> so <laughs> that. <laughs> from, from, a from a results standpoint, he loved it. From a yeah. visual standpoint, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, it's, it's, but hey, good when, you know, when we've had the season like we've had this year, I guess these ra some of these races were bound to happen. You know, we, we couldn't have – all of them can't be incredible races, unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, we'll see how Brazil is for us. It's one of those, uh, don't bother me with the details, just give me the results. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're listening to the show, then please see yeah. <laughs> Please stay and listen to the whole thing, please. <laughs> all of the details, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> we gotta work on James's promoting skills. Over there. <laughs> I've been promoting. You gotta Topo be a hype man, buddy. Night on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Topo Chica is getting all kinds of free advertisements tonight. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, uh, let's. So that's it for the podium. Let's go ahead and recap our driver standings. Top ten. John, take it away. Yes, you have Valtteri. Or, I almost said it. Wow. Woo, let me catch myself there. Max Verstappen, the other B. <laughs> Verstappen in the lead with 312.5 uh, points. Hamilton now 19 points back. Botas 127.5. Perez in fourth at 147. So a nice battle battle. A little battle there between Botas and Perez. 
Norris in fifth at 162.5 back. Leclerc really closing in there at 174.5. So they got a nice little battle going. You can also definitely type in or tack in science with that as well. So three-way battle there for fifth. Um, Ricardo in eighth at, with a 207.5 back. Gasly at ninth, 226.5. And Alonso still holding on the 10th place at 252.5 behind Max. So, yeah, we got a couple little battles definitely spaced out there, but we've got some nice battles for P1, um, P4, P5, you know, or P3, P5. So we've got some good stuff going on. That's here. Uh, I think you've given some people some extra points here. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, the, that's not how it normally is on the agenda, right? No. It really threw me off. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, both These are points behind. Points 180, behind. 185. Okay, so. <laughs> Hamilton's on 293.5, Botas is on 185, Perez on 165, <laughs> Norris on 150, Leclerc on 138, Sainz on 130.5, Ricardo 105, Gasly 86, and Alonso 60. See, this is the now, part where both my co-hosts were napping when I said points behind <laughs> each of these. <laughs> You can't, you can't change 19 enough. points behind. <laughs> but, but you gave Norris behind. 162 and a half and Perez <laughs> as 147 and a half. Even if that's points behind, I don't see what that, what that does. Hey. Andy, could you, could you read the team standings, please? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to the F1 website. Give me a second here. <laughs> All right. So. You mix have, it up one time and they can't handle it, guys. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> We're creatures of habit, dang it. <laughs> I'm oh. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just data, just showing a different way there. Uh, so uh, Mercedes <laughs> leads just barely, but they still lead by uh, a score of 478.5 points, followed closely now by Red Bull Racing on 477.5. Third place is the aforem- aforementioned Ferrari on 268.5. Fourth is McLaren on 255. Fifth is Alpine at 106. Here's another battle that's going to happen. Sixth, AlphaTauri tied on 106. Seven, Aston Martin really in a place of its own on 68. Eight, eighth is Williams on 23. And in ninth is Alfa Romeo on 11. So a little bit closer, but still ways to go to catch Williams. And in 10th, still on zero points, is Haas F1. And zero, zero is also known as 478.5 behind. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I won't do that to you again. I won't mix it up to you again. <laughs> if we're going to change it, we change it before the season starts. <laughs> no mid-season changes. Oh, God. Uh, I didn't mean to catch you guys on low sleep. <laughs> All right. So Deanna normally does the fan emails. I think John wanted Andy to do it. But Andy, I'm gonna do it tonight. I like I like Woo! the, Good for the you. sayings from the people. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, Rachel Fleming says, "Going to be a positive one. Wasn't it great to see that so-called old guard of Vettel, Kimi, and Alonso all have a great race and get good points for their teams, while their respective teammates all seem to have either no pace at all. Maybe experience does count for a lot." Uh, so yeah, we did mention the old guys having a good day. Um, I would agree with that. Uh, anything else anybody want to add to Vettel, Kimi, and Alonso? Well, like we said, that might be Kimmy's last point, so that was really good to see. Um, you know, for Vettel, like I said, it was the best result, I think, since Monaco, so good for him. And, you know, we know Fernando Alonso has got it. You know, it's, it's strange qualifying for him. Otherwise, I think he probably would have shown even better, but uh, can't argue with that in the points. Very good. All right, our guy, Oxgart, I think I'm saying that right, um, says the curse of Bottas continues. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if his pit stop was botched due to the first dinosaur stampede 65 million years ago. <laughs> he may not be Lewis Max Newton fast, but his luck, FFS, which I think stands for for fuck's sake. Yes. Yeah. That it does. <laughs> that it nice. does. Do you have to um, Google that? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the old um, guys. I think we're all falling in that. I mean, I don't know what, what happens when, you know, uh, Valtteri fits that Monaco wing, but uh, apparently that leads to cross threaded tires and botched pit stops. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he's probably uh, still going to finish behind Ricardo anyway. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, then we got our guy, Dave Doherty, saying, uh, What do you think of Red Bull turning the tables on Mercedes in this race? Dave, I absolutely love it. What about you, John? I 
Not surprised. Called it in the preseason <laughs> prediction. So taking it a little I mean, bit longer did. than I thought it was going to. Um, yeah. 19, whatever, how many races we're in now. But, uh, yeah, I said it preseason. I thought Red Bull was going to get the constructors. Um, and it's certainly looking like a possibility. So, especially going into Brazil. I mean, you ended up – we we said even back in the preview, we thought this was going to be a Red Bull track. Um, the qualifying result just – kind of threw all that up for a loop a little bit, but in the race on pace, this is where Red Bull was expected to win and they did so. Very good. And then we have uh, Marisa, I think it's pronounced, um, says the booing of Lewis. It's always at Lewis. It's getting progressively worse. It's gross. I see it. Saw it. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> John, oh, I'll talk about a Ron sorry. Burgundy moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> James reading his own notes that he just typed. I mean, wow. Okay. Wow. This is the, the quality of this show. I'm telling you, when we are missing our other co-host, it, it all goes downhill. Um, Andy brings it up a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, listen, F1, I know people are tired of Lewis Hamilton winning this thing, but F1 could do a lot worse than Lewis Hamilton as a representative. Um, so, you know, he's not calling anybody stupid idiots and not calling teammates stupid idiots. So, you know, we'll leave that for now. But I, I don't know. I don't know why they're booing uh, other than Red Bull fans. But, um, I mean, you had a nice battle. Your boy Checo had a nice battle with Lewis. Lewis won out. Uh, you know, it just was what it is. I don't know. It should have just been happy for, for Checo. So, I don't, I don't really get it. But, I mean, well, I, I kind of get it. People are tired of Lewis winning. So, uh, Andy, anything to add? Well, I will say whenever I get confronted with this question that I always have my two minds about it. My American mind says, um, if you buy a ticket, you can express yourself as long as it is within reason, uh, as you so choose. So if you want to boo any driver for any reason, that's your prerogative. Uh, as a race fan, I say I don't like it on the podium because I believe the podium is a celebration of everybody getting through the race safely. That's what it's designed to be. Um, I don't find it appropriate to boo anybody on a podium. I don't do it. Um, but if you are inclined to do so and you bought your ticket, I'm not going to stop you either. That was going to be my question because um, I did watch the race on quite a delay today. Um, so I kind of just fast forwarded through the, all the end of the race stuff. I was going to ask where he was actually booed at. Was it on the podium? It was in qualifying. It was pretty, when they interviewed him, it was pretty uh, apparent. And then today when they did the interview for, on the podium, same deal. Yeah. Which is weird I'm because kinda... these fans, uh, I feel like in 20, what was it, 18 when he won the championship in Mexico, I felt like he, there was a, a huge applause for him um, in, in that year. And certainly in 2019, I felt like there was a pretty big applause for him when he won that race too. So. Yeah, but he didn't deny Sergio That's Perez true. Anything. I know. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. But hey, check us on the podium. I mean, just you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I see what you're saying, Andy. I see it both ways. So yeah, I'm more on your uh, first uh, mindset there, Andy. I mean, they they paid what they say like an average of four hundred something dollars a ticket. Um, I mean, don't boo or cheer injuries. And other than that, do whatever the heck you want, <laughs> in my opinion. And not a Lewis fan, so I don't, mind, <laughs> I don't mind it anymore. So that's fine. Just remember, you I, could you could always get worse than Lewis Hamilton. Uh, oh, no, representing, I, you know, your sport. Absolutely <laughs> true. And and I've agreed with that many times. Um, like I said, I don't choose to do it. I don't like it when people do it. But again, I'm not going to go out and say, hey, you shouldn't do something if you paid your money and you're not doing it from a place of hate or racism or anything like that. So if you want to boo because you don't like the driver or the result of the race, it's fine. Fair play. All right. Finally, we have Matt Polanski coming in. At the buzzer to get his email in there. Can't go on a uh, review episode without hearing from Mr. Polanski. He says, today's race is called shit. I forgot the race was on, and it's over. <laughs> F1, in, F1 in America is at it again, screwing with my weekend schedule. This race had everything. Batas with all the bad luck conjured up by 1,000 Mexican grandmas. Pit stops all over the place. Racing through the grass and Mexico cityfication. Mexico cityfication is that thing where Mexico City goes ape shit over a Checo podium that it may have registered on the Richter scale. Built on the back of some lap one pandemonium and Max driving a rocket. Max took a commanding lead in the championship, just like I was taking a commanding nap while this race was on live. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Um, I too <laughs> took a 
little siesta for a little bit there. Um, but that's why I love the DVR because you can just rewind it and see what <laughs> you may have missed. It's perfect. All right. So uh, that's it for the emails. Thank you again to everybody who emailed the show. Keep sending us your emails. We love to see them. We love to read them. And we'll even make it on the show. All right. So let's talk about our weekly rewards. And uh, for that, we start with the Rubbish Awards. And Andy, why don't you kick it off? Oh, keep going for me for the first time, for the first ones of these, and I keep having to shoot from the hip. Um, my ru- <laughs> weekly rubbish for this race is just going to be the arrow and the dirty air, the dirty, dusty air that just uh, kept uh, people from overtaking. Uh, this atmosphere is so great. They, they pack them in. The Mexican fans bring a ton of energy. They deserve, in my opinion, a better show than what uh, F1 has put on since this race has come back there. There have been other series that have been able to race better, uh, either with some track modifications or different aero packages. I am sure hoping that the 2022 cars put on a better show here because those fans deserve it. Very good. John? Um, I will give it to Nikita Mazpin, who I believe was only <laughs> six seconds short of being lapped by Nicholas Latifi today. Yeah, at one point he was almost in the points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that lasted about six seconds. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, my rubbish, I'm going to give it to Bottas because. Uh, you suck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible day. And he ruined the chance of having a uh, tie at the top of the constructor. So, <laughs> damn you, Bottas. All right, analysis paralysis. This one should be interesting. Uh, I'm going to give it to John first so that me and Andy can think of one. Uh, I don't know if I really have one necessarily. Um, I mean, I'm with you. You could call out Red Bull for their Yuki comments. That was, you know, that's not really analysis paralysis. But um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't. Nothing really stood out. I'm sure I'm missing something that'll be blatantly obvious. That I'll, I'll get shit for in the comments. But um, I don't know. You guys help me remember something. <laughs> The only thing I can really think of, I mean, strategy was almost null and void at this race. It really didn't matter. Everybody was on the same tire. So you can't really call anybody out for that. The only thing I will kind of give it is to Red Bull. Why, if in, in Q3, that whole Sonoda situation is is a moot point if both Red Bulls actually backed off and gave Alpha Tari's really enough space to complete those laps. They weren't necessarily under a time crunch. And Mercedes had backed off and was a half a lap behind, so it didn't affect them at all. So had they played a similar game, maybe that Sonoda thing doesn't come into into, into play. It's a bit of a stretch. I don't really have one other than that, so I'm going to give it to Red Bull for that reason. That's not bad. I guess I'll just hitch my wagon to you, Andy, because <laughs> I really don't have anything. I, th- I was wondering if maybe – um, I was kind of down to see how far Checo could have gone on that first stint, to see if he could have made it to soft tires. But I don't, I don't know if that would have worked out so good. Um, at one point, I also wondered if, uh, like, I feel like if it would have been anywhere but Mexico, um, Red Bull would have pitted Checo for some softs towards the end to get the fastest To get the lap. fastest lap point, yeah. yeah. Because that would have made the difference between a tie and obviously being down one. I think if it would have been like the last race of the season or anywhere but Checo's home race, I think they probably would have done that because he had more than enough lead on um, on uh, Gasly there. So, well, I um, think I think Red Bull were thinking they could have maybe even you know pit second place, and that's six. Yeah, you know, that's three more points as opposed to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's just hard for me to believe that. Anybody besides like Max is going to chase down and then ultimately pass Lewis. It's just hard to imagine that happening. Um, even as not a Lewis guy, it's just, you know, I'm realist on that one for sure. Um, okay. So dark horse of the day, maybe we can get some, uh, some different ones here. Uh, John, who do you got for dark horse? I mean, I got to go Pierre Gasly on this one. Again, yeah. it's, as soon uh, as I said it, I was like, no, we're all going to, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to shake it up with here, but <laughs> good try though. <laughs> I, I, oh, all right, fine. I'll go with my second pick. I was going to say Kimi Raikkonen because he finished in eighth, got some points. Um, then it's, you know, but then I was like, Gazzy deserves it. So, and I can't really give him the drive of the day, I feel like. Yeah, no, it's a sweep. I mean, Pierre Gasly, um, the, like I said, it's the quietest P4 I've ever known uh, simply because he was dominant amongst the best of the rest. He was clearly the best of the rest today and all weekend. So Pierre yeah. Gasly, dark horse for me. Yeah. Um, as far as driver of the day, I believe the official 
official one went to uh, Checo Perez, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, but I think mine is uh, Max Verstappen. Um, latest on the brakes, a um, lot of confidence in turn one, took the lead and then just dusted everybody, was never in doubt. So I'll give it to Max. Uh, Andy, who do you got? Yeah, Max Verstappen uh, did not put a foot wrong after qualifying uh, when, you know, they were obviously surprised by that result, but uh, uh, did the right simulation work and got it done in turn one. And that was really all she wrote. So Max Verstappen, driver of the day. Good job. Yeah, we'll make it a three-peat. All right, so that's it for awards. So now we'll move into the recap of the race predictions. We're a little bit different than it's been lately. John, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, we had uh, one of our co-hosts that uh, pulled a Max Verstappen, Verstappen-type-esque uh, weekend with a absolute, um, just a, a pretty dominant weekend all around. So Deanna, uh, she was pulling up the rear for a long time, but for four points on the weekend, quality time, and then she swept the podium. So four points for her. My, or James comes in second with three points with the fastest lap time, Max winning, and, and Ferrari points. Um, myself is in second with Max win and Ferrari points um, uh, for the bonus picks or the prop bet there. And then Andy pulling up the rear with one point with uh, Max Verstappen with the win. I will so be the on, overall. I will be on every preview to make sure I no longer get prices <laughs> rated because both y'all ganged up on me. So I don't think it. I don't, honestly, it didn't really matter. I mean, for a while there, it looked like I was going to have a slam dunk. Um, but you know, Valtteri <laughs> screwed me up on qualifying and you know pulling these laps out of nowhere. So I'm mad at, my, I'm mad at myself for not going a uh, hundredth below Deanna instead of just picking <laughs> number of for <laughs> So That'd for the overall the standings, uh, things are starting to tighten up a little bit there. Uh, myself is at 50 points, Andy 43, Deanna now all the way up to 41. We got a nice little battle there, and James went there at 39. So P2 is all to play for, and honestly, P1. At the rate Deanna is cooling up now is, is all to play for, too. So we got a hell of a good battle with uh, just a few races left. So it should be fun to see who takes the trophy. As and, Charles hunts down Lando, I hunt down And we're Andy. going into two places where I have no idea what to do with lap times. Great. <laughs> <laughs> just pick a number in your head uh, and stick it out there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so any final thoughts? Andy, you first. Uh, we re-rack, we go again, but this time we go to Brazil, a track we all know very well but haven't been to in a while. Um, do we have weather? I don't know. I will have to consult my uh, crystal ball on that. So that could play a factor. Uh, championships all hanging in the balance. Battle for P1 in the Constructors. Battle for P3 in the Constructors. Battle now for P5 in the Constructors. So all that to watch for. There's still plenty undecided in this season. The season will roll on, and we will be here to cover it all for you. Sir, last time we were in Brazil, one of my favorite finishes to a race ever. John, any final thoughts? <laughs> and no, one of my we, personal uh, we... favorite when the two Ferraris collided and took each other out. So, <laughs> Andy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... Carlos signs podium sure. from P18 to P3. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, we uh, we re-rack and we do it all again in a couple of days. So we'll be previewing this stuff in three days, something like that now. Two days, yep. right? Oh, right? Yep. So um, time's ticking, 72 hours. We'll be right back with you with another preview. But um, So stay tuned. we got a hell of a good battle shaping up with a, quite a few different places. Yeah, I'm excited to get back down to Brazil. Uh, not physically, but uh, at least on my TV. Uh, should be a good race. Uh, hopefully, this thing continues to be within a race um, apart to keep that uh, pressure up on all the teams. Um, and hopefully, Ferrari can find some pace down there in, uh, in Brazil. And it's a sprint qualifying format weekend, so get ready to dust those regulations up one more time yeah. this season. As if Max yeah, Verstappen needed any more points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, FIA. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so technically, no, damn. <laughs> well, by by this time, a week from now, Charles Leclerc will have buried Vettel. You know, if Vettel wins the sprint that. and the race. <laughs> and gets the fast oh, that, that. that's, that's actually, I didn't think of that. So there, he can get more than 104 points to finish the year. So my math is a little bit off on that. So, um, like I said, there's still a chance. <laughs> yeah. Lightning <laughs> might strike like six times in the same spot. <laughs> never say never. Any given Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I saw somebody put it. You, you probably got about the same odds as somebody put up what it would be if um, if every game on Sunday had a safety in it. 
It was like a one dollar bet to win like three trillion oh my dollars God. or something. It was, or maybe it was like a ten dollar bet, something stupid. But um, I think I think you might have better odds with that than that'll catching up to probably player. probably so. <laughs> Oh, good times. All right, so that's all we have from here. Uh, make sure you do check us out Wednesday night. We should be recording our preview episode. It'll be available for you on Thursday before we start our week down in Brazil. Um, I think that's all we got tonight. So, Andy, take us away. Yep, and as always, may all your laps be fast.